And here we go. Ooh, it's another one, right, from the tournament guidebook, one-liners, mantras, and axioms from Vishnu Warrior. Again, we're going to have a man on the stream very soon. So uh, with that being said, today's title, make sure y'all, hopefully y'all watch the other ones. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube if you haven't already before we get started here for more content, getting better on your game. Check this out. Now, today we got the ISO, right? The ISO, I-S-O, right? It's an acronym in a way, but I mean, it's short for isolation, the ISO, isolated, right? So you can kind of go and uh, figure out where that's going here if you ever heard those terms in chess. But ISO, right? So somebody in the chat, tell me what an ISO is. Tell me what an ISO is, right? And I'm talking basketball, right? For all my players out there, maybe even every sport. I don't know a lot about the other sports when it comes to terms. But in basketball, what is the ISO? What is the ISO? Of course, the thumbnail matches what we're talking about. Gusto says one versus one. Luka Doncic, yeah. Isolani, James Harden style, says Pirate FPS. And can you elaborate a little bit on James Harden style Pirate FPS, right? What do, what do you mean by that, right? Uh, get out of the way. Gonna put my man on an island, okay? How the Bulls used to play, says Gusto. ISO might. But let's say I'm somebody that never watched basketball, right? Or like I, knew, I wanted to know ISO. What does this actually mean? Pawn that can't be defended by another pawn, says Vishnu. It's what you burn on, on a CD. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one on one. Everybody else on the court steps back and watches greatness. That's nice. Lots of flops. Russell Ball on an island itself. Right. So you guys kind of get the picture here if you never know what an ISO is. Right. An ISO. Okay. ISO is one on one. Right. One versus one. Okay. Um, so you understand that. And in chess here, the ISO, what we're talking about today is the isolated pawn. Or how you should and what you should do. Right. Okay. <laughs> Lifetime warranty. Wow. You have somebody alarm going off out there. It's short for isopropyl alcohol. There you go, hero. See? You know, it's all kind of things. ISO, right? Isolation. You know, ISO. Right? Is zero. Isopro alcohol. Whatever you want it to be. That's what ISO is. But for everyone else here in chess for today, we're talking about the isolated pawn. Today's game is uh, Victor Korchnoi versus Anatoly Karpov. Nasty. This was the year. Let me get it. Let me get the year. The year here was 1981, and um, this was the World Championship. So World Championship, 30th one in Murano, um, 1981, and this was uh, round nine, game nine. So, all right, we're playing with the ISO or against the ISO today. What are we about to see? We actually about to see it right now. All right, so here it is. So this game, right? C four English, the English. Okay, we in here with server. What's your video rating? It's like twenty one ninety, something like that. USCF twenty three hundred. All right, low low stats for where where my strength is to be honest, man. Uh, but we got to we got to play more. That's all it's about. Man, those guys hated each other. Oh, big facts, big facts. Carper going to get a nasty with some big crossover, like he hit him with the heem cross the back. ISO yam on him LeBron style. That's what he's trying to do. But let's see. C4, E6 from Anatoly Karpov. After E6, there's knight to C3. So, I mean, of course, you can play many ways, right? You can play the French versions. You can even play F5 here. C6, C5, D5. I mean, there's so many moves. But generally speaking, you're going to play D5. And this is what I used to play for all the French players out there or anybody that has played E6 a lot. You know, I remember before I even knew anything outside of the French, I would only play e6 and d5 against everything think about that if you played e4 i would play e6 and then follow up with d5 and probably c5 if you played b3 i would play e6 d5 probably follow up with c5 if you played d4 i would play d5 when you played c4 i would play e6 and probably follow up with the c5 it was very very easy for me to play this system and it is an easy system to play after d5 d4 and now we have a queen's gambit decline by transposition Bishop e7, knight f3, and knight f6, right? And then bishop g5, okay. We got a really a modern variation, a very common variation here in uh, Queen's Gambit Decline, which is, in my, I mean, uh, to me, this stuff extra boring. So honestly, right up Karpov's alley here. Not saying Karpov is nasty with tactics, but oh yeah, you know, Boa Constrictor, right? He would, you know, um, give you no play and play it out if it was 170 moves. That man gonna beat you though right his stamina was nuts and how he could grind down positions to to the core right and, and literally just play some of the most positional chess you've ever seen in your life right so uh this is right up his alley bro 
right e4 bishop b5 right i mean candy good to see you good to see you edgar carpa roasted nah bro we ain't roasting this man at all ever right let's not put that out there let's not ever say that we did not try to roast uh carpa absolutely not yeah let's not put that out there don't ever you know even gary right gary didn't gary you know that he had a bad tournament that's all we gonna say he had a bad tournament right you don't say nothing bad about gary is uh you know they come back on you somehow some way maybe he'll find you you know they know how to get to you these days now they pull up at your address h6 after h6 he plays bishop h4 so after bishop h4 black to move chat especially for people that don't play queen's gambit decline or are looking to learn this is a very classical open what would you play in this position it's on you chat what are we doing it's a very simple moves to make here we're gonna pull up in st louis and dominate big facts one day we'd love to hear your fitness training plan to prepare for norm nine game tournaments yeah no problem yeah i do a lot for that and while i'm there i train too gary parter kgb get an operative on you oh big fat hey man it pull up on you that man got connects castles from jp ham we got g5 g5 is totally a move as well c5 and we live c5 is a little bit too early usually you want to wait till the knights on d7 sometimes even playing b6 first b6 into qid fashion which is queen's indian declined um means indian declined wait a second qid you know what queen's indian i'm thinking about something else qid it's just they don't really say like the qid like that queen's indian yes king's indian okay and q qid queen's indian i'm tripping i'm like queen's indian decline what the heck is that fender mass splendor c5 we have castles from vishnu warrior and uh, A6 is also another one, which is one of the newer ones. Janowski type stuff. What's your chess.com username? Is right. It's uh, Jim Canty, bro. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. You can see it uh, on on everything. So, Castles is the move. Pretty simple. Are we live? Absolutely, bro. What's up? St Styro Minor. 63. Thanks for the follow. It says 97. After Castles, there is uh, Rook to C1. After Rook to C1, I mean, there's many ways you can play. C6. Taking c5 probably knight to d7 b6 Ch chat we just gonna move through this one d takes c4 is what he went for and then e3 now after e3 okay it's on you chat what do you do right this is a structure very strong structure bishop takes c4 is coming next you haven't completed development in fact you haven't done anything but develop your bishop knight and castle so you need to do something and you, you play a little bit active or start getting your army out start developing your pieces but the question is how and you want to do it in a way that you're not cramped so what do you do here? Greg Lar says knight to d7. Knight to d7. You know what I'm saying? He says, how come he went e3 instead of e4? That's a great question. In fact, let's go back and let's look at why e3 or e4. So e4, a lot of times, you can get in trouble with stuff. But let's say, let's see here. Knight c6 is a move. c5. I thought b5 was a move. I just turned on the engine to see. Because I play um I play the Vienna now, which is sort of like this, in fact, where I see razor sharp positions now because of uh swap nails material. Um he's a very strong grandmaster. But here, Bishop B5 is very nice. This is up my alley all the way. And the idea here is if knight takes, I can take on E4. Right. And then if you play E5, cool. I have no problem playing knight to D5. After bishop takes, these positions are really cool. Knight takes, queen b4 check. Right, and, and and now I'm hitting the knight. I can take on b2. I'm active. Bishop gets to the diagonal. Pass pawn after I take on a2 if possible. It's nasty. It's literally nasty. Swap Neil. I forget his last name, bro, but you can literally Google him. It's like Grandmaster Swap Neil. It's easy to remember his first name and very hard to remember his last name. <laughs> I'm like, yo. Last name, don't even know. But Swap Neil, that was easy. Oh, that's kind of cool. Swap Neil. Castle takes an e3, and after e3, c5. C5 is very nice, right? With knight behind. That means that means he good, right? If you can't pronounce the last name, let me let me show you. Hey, who know about Roman Gingy Hasvili, right? Who know about Roman Gingy, right? They call him Gingy for short because his last name seems like 26 letters uh, of the alphabet, all 26 or whatever, and like jambled together. It looks like somebody slapped the alphabet on this man's last name. It start with a D. Okay, that's cool. That's easy. Then it's a Z, bro. Whoop. D, Z. Never in your life does this ever go together in a sentence. But it's D, Z, and then the rest is like Ashbili, right? So it's a lot in there. <laughs> that man good though. He real, real good. 
Real, real good. I played several Blitz games with him many years ago. That's crazy, Lorgan. Online or offline? Where was that at? In fact, where was that at? I, I took some lessons with him. Very strong. So, all right, let's get back to the game. So, after C5 happens here from Carpal, um, where do you find Swap Note Terry? You can find it uh, really uh, lots of places. Chess base, chessable. Um, pretty pretty awesome chess. But a lot of times, chess base and, and uh, chessable. Edgar Wright. OTB. You played him OTB? That's fire, bro. Where at, Lorgan? Where did you play Roman OTB? So after c5 bishop takes c4 and now okay cool a, a black to move did you play us open wow was this a uh, was this in the tournament or was this like the skittles room got named by the letter spaghettios yep mm -hmm. absolutely i believe it black to move black to move chat what do you do 97 for musty must be the polish last name it says susio c takes d4 skittles room that's crazy lorgan that is fire the skittles room wow he was there in the skittles room that's sweet Elevation, big facts. Skittles run. JP Ham got C takes D4 here. Thanks for the follow. L Marski. Knight C6. I like Knight C6 as well. I do like it. You also have moves like maybe Queen B6 and sometimes developing the bishop first, which is strange. Which is strange. What's the Skittles room? That's I don't know why they actually call it that. Literally, you know, how why is it called that? I have no idea. Uh, I think even the origin is unknown. But the uh that's just the room where you just do whatever it like oh i'm done with my game i can go sleep in this room i can go play chess in this room i can chill analyze games skittles room is where you actually just do whatever literally chill and relax after the round where a lot of a lot of blitz and bug house goes down there thanks for the follow draped welcome in fact here's the move y'all six c takes d4 and after e takes d4 we have the title of the video the iso the isolated pawn with that being said, there is so much that goes on right here. It's ridiculous. There are books just dedicated to the isolated pawn, or maybe not just the isolated. I mean, some is a few, but very few. But with it, with the uh, the pawn structures, there's books out about pawn structures where you actually should uh, understand what to do in the pawn structure. From right here, in fact, as player as strong as Karpov here and Korchnoi as well knows exactly what they need to do for both sides this is the world championship in 1981 they know what they need to do for both sides here so don't get that twisted but at the same time you do need to understand that sorry that's not the move you need to understand that uh the pawn structure is the gps of the game i learned this from a gm coach of mine when i was working with him um and i remember he used to tell me this and tell me a lot about the russian chess school as well and here this is this is known that the pawn structure is the gps if you don't have a gps what you gonna do when you get in the car you're just gonna drive and you ain't got nowhere to go, and you out here looking crazy, and you're wasting your gas. What you doing, big fella? Right. So here, when you have a pawn structure, it should tell you how you play the rest of the game. Imagine that. If you knew what the pawn structure was, you could play the entirety of the game with ease because you know what to do. So it's very understand. It's very good to understand what to do with this kind of game. So right now, there's an ISO pawn. Why is it ISO? Why is it isolated? Well, let's check. Isolated is isolated because it can't be defended by any of the pawns. None of these pawns can touch this pawn on d4. Not at all. Why are these not isolated? Because they're partners. They cool it. Like, I can defend you, and then if you step up on me, big guy, I got you, my guy. Like, we rolling. We rolling. We good. You know, these guys, yeah, we good. You know, they could be weak if you push them by themselves, but we good. Like, we got each other. This one has no one. You have to defend it with a pawn, or not a pawn, a piece. Which uh, your pieces want to do other stuff than defend regular pawns. Now, ways to get rid of this isolated pawn, right? The ways to get rid of it, let's actually flip the board here. There's two sides to the iso pawn. The person with it and the person without it. In fact, chat, what do you do here? When you have an isolated pawn, what do you do? What are you supposed to do? What is the plan? What are you supposed to do here? And then we're going to see how they do this in the game. But first things first is what is the plan? Chess Chi Town says trade the pawn. Control the square in front of the pawn. Very nice, musty, rusty. And Chess Chi Town is right, right as well. Advance the pawn. That's right. That's right. Trade it. That's right. Stack the rooks behind it. That is correct. Sack, sack, mate. That's a variation of correct, but not technically correct. You want to control the square in front of it, right? Yes, correct. That is correct, but it's uh, marginally correct. Blockade it with the knight, okay? If you're the person with, we're talking about with it not without it uh that's that's for black elevation and that's that's reverse you want to blockade it with the knight but if you're playing with it what do you actually do just castle says phantom master clinic lose the pawn look for trade says el marski that's for black as well 
Elmarski. In fact, if you look for trades, you can literally, you know, shake hands while you're doing it, right? Sign the score sheet while you're trading the pieces because you're already about to lose. Like you just, you have no idea where you're going or what you're doing here, right? You want to not look for trades. In fact, you actually, when you have the isolated pawn, there's a method. There's a lot of things you want to do. One of the main things you do, and in fact, I remember reading this verbatim from the pawn structure book is knight, put a knight on e5. Put a piece on e5, but preferably a knight, right? We're going to draw the arrows. We put a knight here, all right? You also want to put the bishop on c2, usually, or b1. If you look at a lot of my games, c3 Sicilians, isolated pawn games with pan off Bopinix, um, you'll be able to see c3 Sicil for the kills, of course. Attack the king, avoid trains. I mean, yes, attack the king, correct. That's actually 100%, probably dead on, besides uh, maybe one other point, but attack the king and avoid trades is draped as 1,000% correct. Literally, you're not looking for trades. I will go out of my way to not trade. As long as I'm not, you know, looking crazy or really losing, right, I will go out of my way not to trade. So, you know, bishop b3, bishop c2. You want to get the bishop here. You want to put a knight on e5. The bishop has to go to g5 usually because you want to take this off and put a queen on d3. Literally, it's all about a queen side attack or king side, which means it's white. You usually want to probably castle queen side so that you can have more ammo to throw at him. But if you can't do that due to here, right, Rook's already on C1, this honestly kind of slows down an attack a little bit, but you also can Rook lift as well. So again, we want a Bishop here. Bishop on G5, which that's accomplished. Knight on E5. Queen here. Rook's centralized. And the Knight on E5, because it's cleared, the Rook can go from E1 or D1 and then go to E3 and G3. I just won a few games like that. Literally today in training games on one of my training accounts. I have already done this kind of thing today. No tournament today. No, uh, it's kind of late today. So we're just going to do uh, the analysis. Um, but uh, after he takes d4, right? So this is uh, this is what the plans are when you have an isolated pawn. Why is it so important not to trade when you have the iso pawn? Well, think about this. If you have, and that's a great question too. If you have the iso pawn, when pieces come off the board, think about this. Just imagination. Imagination. Okay, just close your eyes real quick or keep them open. In fact, you do need to look at this. So after we remove all these pieces, if all of the pieces are gone off the board, this is a weak pawn. The only thing that can be defending this weak pawn is usually the king, which means now the king has to kind of stay around here. If there's a rook on the board, this could be very weak. And it's not good to have a weakness or more or two or three weak. It's not good to have weaknesses, bro. It's really not. So you do not you do not want to trade these pieces off because they help defend the pawn and you're gonna lose it. You're just straight up gonna lose it, which is not gonna be good. It's easier for black to play. Let's flip the board here, look at it from black's point of view. Your tactical genius shell, thanks, Boogie. Uh isolated pawn requires extra resources from opposition to stop it from queening. Right. Very good elevation. So here in this position, now flip the board. Thanks for the follow magics. We're looking at this from black's point of view. I am the person without the isolated pawn i'm playing against the isolated pawn how does black play here chat how does black play here what's the plans we're not even talking about moves yet i mean we kind of are but mostly the plan what's the plan your youtube thumbnails are sick by the way shout out to you sorry thanks thank you so much for the thumbnails yeah she fire she she straight up cold legend oh yeah she she definitely on the team on the canty team Blockade the pawn and look for trades. Blockade the guy. Occupy the square in front of the IQP. Block the juicer, right? Pin the pawn, get an item D5, block the juicer, turn into a trading Andy. Okay? That's pretty good, guys. That's pretty good. There's more to it as well, though. You do want to trade pieces. I mean, honestly, everything opposite, right? You want to trade pieces. You're looking to trade pieces. So knight to D5. Controlling the square in front of it. Put a knight in front of it. The knight is the best square to blockade. Because the knight, not only can I uh, still attack stuff. But I can also still blockade the pawn and defend things if I need to. This is why the knight is the best, not the bishop. Queens and rooks are terrible blockaders. You never want to do the blockade with a rook, queen, or bishop. A bishop, is, bishop can blockade, but it's not the ideal piece. If you get a bishop here, you still kind of hit knees. But it's not ideal. It's always the knight's the ideal. Naturally develop attack sack, mate. Big facts. Go for trades. Right. Correct. Correct. Put pressure on the e-file uh, of the ISO. You don't want to end it with your own isolated pawn. Correct. Okay, here we go. Now, with all that being said, plans out the way. Done. Let's see how the boys do this. This world champs, champs, you know, this the ship right here. Okay. 1981 world championship. 
with the big dogs, right? Uh, we got a uh, right, uh, Corsino and uh, Carpal. Okay, so Black Simple, play the Cobotes Gambit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you do that. Just let me know what, what happened to JP Ham Knight C6 from JP Ham. Developed from Susio. What is that email? That's funny. What is this email? Oh, that's kind of cool. So, what do you do, guys? Knight to C6 is on the board, or at least in the chat, I mean. Knight C6, maybe you can play Bishop D7. A6. No game, it's a GM level. Oh, you'd be surprised. Elevate, el, el, um, elevation, you'd be surprised. It's original Pog champ used with the new Pog champ. Oh. I was wondering what that was. That was, I've never seen it. A6. A6 I like too. A6, in fact, is an engine move. The, the, the moves are Knight C6, B6, and A6. B6 looks great, in fact. Putting the bishop on the long diagonal, controlling D5. A6 is a move, but he chose Knight C6. Very easy. Karpov's like, bro, just develop. Like, what are you talking about, right? Castles, he get out the way. Okay, now it's black to move here. And this one, I want you to really start to think here. I want you to really start to think about how you want to do this, right? We got the plans for both sides. We know what we want to do. What do you do now? I sub just for it's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> funny. Queen b6, knight b4. Okay, I like both of those moves. In fact, queen b6 is nice side sidestepping the d uh, the d4 pawn. And I mean sidestepping because now that I've vacated the square, I can now put the rook on d8, which helps pressure the pawn and pressuring b2. Queen b6 is nice. In fact, I like queen b6. Queen b6, knight b4. This is a nice move as well. This is actually a very common theme of the isolated pawn because if you go knight d5 he just kind of takes it and you're actually losing some material almost maybe not yeah, you can always take with the knight you're not losing anything but you know knight b4 the intention is to go d5 and now you have two knights there pretty cool knight a5 from danny knight a5 could be played but that's that's premature it's premature because after the bishop moves he wants to go here anyway remember you want to be on this diagonal anyway so you know you want to usually do this when you can when a6 and b5 is already played and you can play knight a5 and knight c4 with the rook on c8. That's the optimal time to usually play that. Knight on a rim is done. Yeah, and if you put a knight on a rim within two moves, you should be able to bring it back to the center. Or try to. Um, or you in some trouble. My god. Rook when he's done. You made it rhyme this time. That's right. You know what he did. I didn't even notice. Oh my goodness. Phantom Master Cleanser is, is, is like growing. He's getting a little bit better. I can't even believe I'm saying that. Wow. What's good, peeps? What's up, Sam Hain? Sam Hain. F. Pat. Pat. Patek. F. At? what's up right i don't think i've seen it in the chat though knight a5 knight d5 maybe six we in a mid mix there we go musty what's good yo here it is right here this is a spectacular move now tell me what this move is right here this is what karpov did tell me in the chat what is this knight h5 oh sheesh hold up hold up sheesh bro what all right, when Karpov make a move like this, you got to really like, wait, 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 wait. What? Knight H5? Wow, that's deep, deep understanding. What is this doing? All he wants to do is simplify the position. What does simplify me? Trade, liquidate, make pieces, just trade pieces, get them off the board. Why? Because there's an isolated pawn. So the more that I trade, and especially when I get rid of this bishop, it's an uncomfortable pressure. I can, well, first off, I have knight f4 here to try to provoke a weakness of g3. Eventually, maybe use the diagonal or put the bishop on h3 as well. But also, bringing the knight right back to civilization. Bringing the rook to d8, especially if you take, maybe I can take with the queen or even with the knight, in fact. And play knight f6 and put the knight back on d5, feeling real life, right? So knight h5 is a big boy move from the big fella himself. So after knight h5, bishop takes c7, how do you take this chat? With the knight or the queen, it's on you. And you better guess right. 97 for Musty. Queen says A dot or A dot says queen. Knight takes E7. The knight, we got a block eight, says Musty. Queen from Aqua. Knight to what number is that? A mil? Two mil? Two million percent? Queen, it's like a lot of zeros, no comma. You know, you got to like count. Okay. Queen, knight takes E7. Queen. All right, here it is, chat. Here it is. If you said queen, unfortunately, I'm going to have to ban you from the chat. Psych! Don't do that. Don't, you know, breathe. It's going to be all right. I'm kidding. Breathe. And you're going to be fine. But it is knight takes c7. Knight takes c7 is a move. And it's very nice because knight d5 is going to be real live, especially when we can play knight f6 to follow. 
very, very nice to, way to play this. Thanks for the follow, Aaron Vol. Where the night gang at? Big facts. No, 965, yeah. Can't in that vest is uh, the pieces feel real heavy? It really does feel like perfect set. Uh, actually, no, the pieces don't feel real heavy. They feel like, honestly, they feel perfectly like the right side. Do I have it? Well, my piece is over there in my study area. So my uh, all over the board study area. I have the online study area and the over the board study area. It's nice though, solid two day fire, bro. You you will see me when you see me at the tournament. You will see me with my best chest set ever. Like big facts. So um, knight f six though. Knight takes e seven is good with knight d five. Pretty nice. I bought the best chest coming in on Monday. Hey big hey bro, that's gonna be fire. Gonna be fire. When's your next uh, uh September? September. I'm looking at September for Charlotte. So 97, after 97, bishop to b3, he backs that boy up. If you take with your queen, he attacks the knight in the center. That's correct. He could play d5, but knight takes is just better here. Um, keep that going your way. I do not. I don't think I do. I have another deal I worked out, so I don't think I have that yet. But solitude, uh, just send me, um, send me a message when you grab it, and I'll send it over to the dude. Let him know. Came from you. This should be three and knight of six. So he brings that boy back. We go into d5. And after knight e5, all right, guys. So what do you do now, chat? In fact, you know, this right here is probably the hardest part of these positions. Yes, we only traded one piece, but there's still a lot of play left. And you are still undeveloped. In fact, you still have the French bishop, right? Because in the French, this bishop is absolutely gross. And right now, the bishop is absolutely gross. So... You have to do something about this, but at the same time, you need to be very careful because at a moment's notice, like bishop c2, f4, g4, I mean, super aggressive stuff can start coming at you. And I know this personally. I have done this, in fact, from both sides. Let me look at it from White's point of view. Yeah, from here, I still feel attack-ish. I don't feel like I'm not, you know, even right now, I'm an attacking player. You know, Tao's my granddad. Shout out to him. 92, rook c3, and rook g3 type stuff. Bishop c2, queen d3, that's for me, right? We, I mean, I'm about to, I'm just throwing everything at him. If it works, it works. If it don't, then it don't. But that, you got to ISO pawn, right? You know, you got to do something. And it calls for you to play aggressively, right? So you need to do that. Let me flip the board back. So it's black here. You got to do this right. And in fact, uh, b6 is not the move. He did not play b6. But b6 is playable. It's just not what he chose. Not what he chose. And which is kind of strange, in fact. Kind of strange. He didn't play b6. Maybe he was just afraid of, like, maybe knight b5. But I, I don't really, like, I'm not understanding that, right? Like, bishop b7 is just automatic. Grandpa Tao, absolutely. Very cool. Stream, very instructive. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Do what the position requires, not what you want. Exactly. I never played chess. It's very, very educational. Let's go, man. Hey, go get you a chess.com account, bro. Click on the About tab right now under the Twitch chat. Or About on Twitch. Click it. Make sure, um, click the chess.com thing, get you an account, sign up. Grandpa Tao, big facts, Ed. After 95, he played Bishop D7, which is a great move, in fact. I mean, just really finishing development. Bishop D7 and Rook to C8. A very easy way of playing. But I really was like, I mean, like, I've even, even in a pawn structure book I've read, I have seen many games with the B6, Bishop B7, so that was kind of automatic. So to see this is like, wow, he played bishop d7. Okay, let's see how the rest of the game progresses. So queen to e2, right? He does bring the rook to c8. And now here it is. Boom. Knight to e4. Now, um, there's some notes here actually on this game. It says that this is a strategical mistake. Exchanging pieces is black's plan and white should be the one avoiding it. We just talked about this. Not proposing new trades. It was better to keep the tension with rook f to d1 or rook c to d1. So what's better if we flip this right? Oh, absolutely. Looking at this from my point of view, understanding these pawns, I'm not playing this. You can't play this until the bishop is on c2. I know this from thousands of games in these type of positions, right? I, I know this, bro. Rick, you bring both here. One of these is coming up here to say, hello, hey, who's that? Who's home? Who's at the crib right now? Bring the bishop over here, bring the queen over, and every piece you got going to this side of the board. This is what you do here. But 94? Oh, no, big fella. You can't do this, my guy. You cannot do this. 94. He is not in trouble, but, I mean, shoot. Like, we want to trade. That's exactly what the note said. We want to trade pieces, right? So, he trades automatically, not even thinking twice about it. Uh, that's crazy. Why, 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 
why would black have play a6 instead of bishop d7 it's probably extremely slow in fact because you haven't you have pieces on the back rank and you're playing a6 well you know maybe maybe not that slow obviously queen d3 b5 but then i just kind of get the position i'm looking for anyway maybe he could have played this way right but uh, maybe maybe he could have but he played uh he played in this fashion rook c8 takes and then he actually did this bishop c6 after knight e4 it was captures on e4 and then he played bishop c6 right so this bishop's already terrible this looks like a strange move but this bishop's already terrible right like it's a gross bishop it's the french bishop so you will gladly give this up because now you're getting rid of the pieces that can attack you he takes it and now how do you capture this how do you capture this you want to see Ashley? Uh, hope you know I'm grandma or something. <laughs> nah, Sasso. Yeah, that'd be fine. Maybe. That'd be cool. Take with the rook, ask for a trade. Takes knight. Okay. And B takes C6 and rook takes. All right, okay. So all of these are moves. Of course, obviously, you have three captures, right? Um, to be honest, I would take with the Rick as well. Rick takes and Rick takes is what he chose. B takes would be a huge error because now you just, I mean, you can take it and you got the D5 square, but now you've created an unnecessary weakness. It is an unnecessary weakness. And it's very unnecessary where now, you know, Bishop A4 could now hit here. Like you can't go Knight D5 and defend this at the same time. So imagine, right, it's two isolated pawns here. This is teeter out to a draw quickly. Maybe Rick C3 plans for both sides, doubling. Playing bishop a4 and literally just relentlessly attacking it, right? And the same thing for black, like queen d6, rook d8, and like you get this one, I get that one, right? It's probably that. It's probably that. It's just an unnecessary weakness. So after knight takes, knight takes c6 could be a move as well, I think. But maybe some, well, yeah, he's also hitting d4. But here, you actually could play d5. And now I get rid of the weakness, and now the advantage is gone. So rook takes is the only move. And now after uh, rook c3, which is the move here, but in fact, uh, if... You know, rook takes c6 here. This is very, very strange, but now it's slightly different. It's slightly different because the pressure is gone with both of the rooks being on the file if we took with the pawn. I mean, look at this. It's so crazy how miraculous chess is, right? Because if knight takes and pawn takes, there is pressure here because we can't get rid of the pressure. So if we go rook c3 and double up and everything and hit this, there's pressure here constantly. But after knight takes, rook takes, and it, he played rook c3, of course, no, he did. But rook takes c6 is just better because now if knight takes, we can play d5, get rid of the isolated. Or if pawn takes, we create one for him. And, you know, this is this is uh, more stable for black, I would say. Queen b6, rook d8, right? You got a little bit more play, but white's still able to hold, hold, barely, barely able to hold due to analysis here. And let's see what the note says. After this, it says this is a typical idea when playing against the isolated pawn. Black uh, recaptures, whoa. Uh, let me turn this down here. Okay. Recaptures with the piece with the C pawn, fixing the Isolani forever. It's true that C6 is also a weakness, but it's also easier to defend, right? It's easier to defend right now. Absolutely. Correct. So after C6, uh, pawn takes C6. Let's see what happens. What did he do next? Um. Oh, he didn't actually. No, he played rook C3. Sorry. So, okay. Takes, takes. He played rook C3 here, which was strange. I mean, that's a strange move. Like, this is extremely strange. <laughs> Rook to c3, but hoping that you take so you can help me connect my pawns. Rook to c3, of course we're not about to take this rook, bro. So what do you do, chat? Black to move. Scuff Gambit, thanks for the follow. Oak chess, says Susie, y'all. Oak chess, my guy. And then Oak chess. Knight d5. And knight d5, I mean, kind of the same, I guess. Knight d5 is a move, guys. It is. It is. You have better moves, though. You have better moves. You have better moves. Queen b6, rook d6. I like rook d6 too, in fact. Great morning in chat. What's up, Andre? What's up, dog? F5. Ooh, F5 is a super blunder. And the reason why I say it, well, first off, you drop in the pawn. Secondly, is this is just gross. Oh, my goodness. Look how weak that pawn is. Look how weak that pawn is. It's a family channel, man. You can't be saying that kind of stuff in the chat. GG Nicholas, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Queen b6. Okay. Queen d6, in fact, is the move. This is what he chose. All right. So queen to d6 with the idea of activating the f8 rook. So now the rook can like go here, can go d8. This is a simple move. I honestly probably would have went queen b6 because I like the I like the lateral damage I can do here. I just like hitting the pawn diagonally. 
but queen d6 g3 rook d8 easy rook to d1 and then okay now what do we do next what do we do guys this is a clever i mean what karpov did was very very clever here you have to think clever and karpov so this, this is not going to be easy. I'm going to be surprised if somebody finds this plan. I'll be very surprised if you find this plan. And if you do find this plan, it's because you Googled the game. And you was like, oh, oh yeah, I got it. But you, you wasn't thinking that. You was not thinking to do that. Knight C8 and we great. <laughs> Knight C8 is pretty cool, Phantom Master Cleansing. In fact, you know, it, it could be a good move. Knight B6 to follow. But, I mean, it's also doing the same thing. Here than it would be on b6 so what's the reroute for right knight f5 i do like knight f5 but the problem i think is with d5 once again if they can push and get rid of the pawn then they're in great shape knight c8 e5 e5 nah that's not gonna work that's 100 face blockage cambodian wow that's not a move takes 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 sheesh a5 and we live a5 could be a possibility a6 with b5 as well rig d to c8 Rook c5, knight f5. Yeah, nobody found it. I knew nobody would find it here. This is a nasty plan here. This is a, a nuts plan. Queen b5 is sexy, right? So, musty rusty. Yeah, thanks for the follow. Happy b day, Dom. Boris, no, thanks for the follow. And out has outhouse yeti. Knight g6, queen b5, knight d5. Here it is, chat. Watch this. Rook to b6. You like, what? Or you get one of them faces? Hey, don't I got that emote for that? I got an email for that. Let me see. I got something like it. Oh, yeah, here it go. Bro, what? Wow. Sheesh. Rig B6, bro. What are you doing? Somebody please tell me what this move is in the chat. And I, and if you can't figure it out, that's totally fine. Because the only way I knew what he was doing with this move is because I read what was in the notes. <laughs> I, I know what he wants to do. And it's genius, right? So, but what is the idea here? Rig B6 is genius. I've never seen it. All right. This is a idea of rook before, okay? Rook before exchange sack, put a bishop, put the knight on d5. That's a great plan, actually, Jack. But you're only, you know, you're not pushing for a win if you think about that. If we do sacrifice, which is actually a cool plan, sacrificing, playing knight d5, you're not actually progressing or progressing. You can't actually press. The rook is still on d8, and he still has the file. He probably always has the file. So you might actually be losing in those lines. It's not necessary either. Like, why? why you know it's not necessary so you can play queen d7 says Vishnu warrior who is the author of the book we already know he knows so we're not even going to listen to that so um exchange sacrifice root knight c6 rook b5 for we in here from Harold bloom putting pressure on b2 so we bishop on a queen bishop lines up with the queen black play f5 on b2 pawn wait what did he say put pressure on b2 and uh you can capture the b2 pawn um that could be a possibility he's saying if bishop c2 right if bishop c2 and you take on b2 um that might be face blockers though let's see why is it here here probably check and then is this a move yeah that's a wrap rapster close close though it looks kind of cool but almost had it but rick takes b2 so here's the plan in fact vision warrior did get it right i mean of course he's the author of today's book right of the book we're going through for the series this is right that's not what i say you said the f5 pawn there's no pawn on f5 i said f5 pawn this is the f5 pawn this is the f5 square you said putting pressure black will play f5 oh wait 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 okay so you said what putting pressure on c2 on b2 so if white pressures the queen black can play f5 oh, okay here playing f5 um yeah probably this is this is probably playable this is probably good too in fact rook b6 but rook b6 the whole idea for this guys is is queen d7 and rook d6 why can't we do it now let's go back if we go rook uh, to uh, queen d7 yo my guy hey bro hey bro hey thanks for the raid my guy thirsty monster <laughs> what's good young dog what's good thanks for the raid bro how you feeling thirsty monster in here with the raid we going over this game right now you know talking about the iso pawn the isolated the isolation the iso man can what's up bro the b pawn pa falls right but yeah no in fact queen d7 is is uh queen d7 doesn't work because of p12 said it is bishop a4 bishop a4 and now you just like wow you just gave up an exchange for literally nothing so he plays rook b6 first right rig b6 so now i can play queen d7 put the rook on d6 i got aliakin's cannon or gun i would say cannon I always say that 
but it's the same thing right but it's it's kind of like ali ekin's gun where um you know the root the queen is in between the rooks when usually it's behind all of the rooks but queen d7 rook d6 is still going to be fine especially leading here knight f5 or knight c6 to follow at the absolute right moment rook to b6 nasty move and then after rook b6 okay queen e1 he gets out the way we go with the plan all right can't will be fun though what's up doc i'm going to sleep away camp for the next few days breaking my almost 400 days of streaming oh wow thirsty monster you can stream off your phone bro if you got your cell phone like literally just you can stream for five minutes if you want to maybe you can before bed if you got cell phone reception out there use the app and stream off your phone if you don't want to break the street vortex ember thanks for the follow bro thanks for the follow you want a lot to bring phones oh, bro what oh man hey man Hey, be safe out here. Hey, be safe. Be safe, young dog. Queen d7. After queen d7, rook c to d3. Rook d6. Right, so he's here. Black has managed to fulfill his plan and put pressure on the d4 pawn. I just thought that would be a good idea. Thanks for the follow. Uh, Charlie. I would, if I could, I even stream the day of my tonsil surgery. Yeah, it's all good, man. It's all good. And you're going to go for a week, too, man. Hey, be safe. Have fun. Yeah, right. Wow, sub Susio. Yo, this is that's that's great, bro. Thirsty monster in the chat. Shout out to the young dog there. Queen e4. After queen e4, black to move. What do we do? What do we do? Come on, chat. Queen e4. What do we do now? I'm gonna show you what the engine says too. Engine has some nice moves. Let's see what you got though. Have lots of fun. Big facts, man. Have lots of fun, bro. Have lots of fun. E5. E5. Just hangs the pawn because the queen takes. Bye, chat. Hey, thanks again. Thirsty monster. Get some rest, man. Catch you on the next one. Peace, bro. So E5 is his queen takes. Adios, Canty Jedi, and have a good week. Thanks, bro. Same to you. F5. F5 right now uh, it just weakens E6. I just don't like to weaken E6 like this when you don't need to. Like ne Making unnecessary weaknesses will will haunt you later on. So think about that. If you make, an, if you make this move... E6 could be weak literally for the rest of the game. You have to always think about, shoot, can he take on here? Can he take? You got to be careful. So if it's not actually forced, sometimes you just don't want to do it. Knight at five, A5, knight E5 earned. Also have to go, Canty. Love your stream. Thank you, PVZ. Appreciate your knight D5, knight at five, knight G6. Okay, so engine moves. Engine moves, knight D5. That's pretty obvious. That's probably what I would have went for just to put it here and try to see what he does next, right? I probably went for this. I don't want to make any weaknesses yet, and I don't want to commit my pawns. I don't know what to do on them yet. Maybe I need them here. Maybe I want them a6b5. Maybe I want them a5b5. I don't know. So I would just probably put the knight on d5, see what he does. And that's what the engine likes. Second move is b5, and third is a6. What Karpov did is none of these. And I'm at the club, bro. Let's go. Are you at the club? Like, are you at the club club right now, Van? Or are you at, like, the chess club? Like, what club are you talking about? You got the chest screen wrong. What, what club are you at right now, Van? We need to clarify this. Emberg, thanks for the follow. 95, illegal, right? I mean, is he at the club, like, music blaring, and he in here and on the stream? Or he at the chess club? That's a little different. That, that's more like it. Queen C6 is the move here, y'all. This is what he played. He's at Sam's club, right? Yeah. He's at Sam's club. Oh, man, that's funny, bro. He's at Sam's club. Stop. Queen C6. You're at the risk club. Y'all ridiculous. Queen C6, bro. Yeah, Sam's club, right? Hey, Sam's club's fire. No lie. Queen C6, Queen F4. He steps out the way, does not want to trade. Then he goes from knight to D5 to put the knight in the center of the board. And then after queen to D2, well, this game is not over yet. We got a lot of work to do, chat. So what do we do now? What do we do now? Queen D2, he defends. Right, he got basically the same position I was looking for. Or black had, in fact, is what I meant. Um, is, and, and so he's defending the pawn with everything he has. Passive, in a way. I would post a photo if I could. Yo, you can post it in the Discord, bro. Like right here, just say what up. Yo, I'm at the club, y'all, right? What club are you at? All right, you can post that in the Discord in a general chat. Silent King H7, Queen B6, A5, A5 pawn, okay? A5 could be a move, but I mean, he just takes that. That's just a pawn. That's a pawn ski. Freebie. And then I would I would be okay, you know, giving up the D4 pawn. Because I mean I'm up a pawn now. Queen takes a five charge pawn. A6 is a move. Um and B5. But in fact, the move here was Queen to B6. 
full turtle mode activated by white big facts right so he played queen to b6 right and after queen b6 here it is right and now here white has a I, if i'm playing white let's flip it if i'm playing as caution on here i would probably maybe king g2 kind of consolidate maybe a3 and slowly back this bishop up to b1 and still maybe play b4 grab a little space and like maybe shuffle a little bit it's gonna be a long game but i would never do what he did in it right here I would never do what he did right here. Fortunately, took on d5. At this point, Karpov ain't got nothing to lose now. I mean, this is it. Now you just, your whole plan now is white. It's just to sit here and hope I'm okay. I mean, I hope he don't get me, bro. I just hope, bro. Like, that's, <laughs> that's not the kind of chess you want to play. I hope I can hold this, bro. Oh, man. Oh, please. Please, bro. <laughs> trying to hold this position bro like why would i do this this is miserable i would just keep the bishop and just kind of relax and just shuffle see what he do but he took on d5 and karpov like bro what what that's how they was doing back in the day too like expressions they would just kind of look around the board and you can look at kasparov videos spiral videos funny must see right that's beyond hope chess that's down bad chess yo i don't understand bishop takes d5 i just never do this but rick to b3 so he's going for a little bit of counterplay Let's actually flip the board. We look at it from Karpov's point of view. Right. Hilarious, right? Queen c6, queen to c3, right? So, okay, do we trade, chat? And if we don't trade, then where do we go? If we don't trade, where are we going? Of course, I was just tired of Karpov grind. Of course. I mean, I don't know how long this game was. Hours-wise, this could have been two hours in. Hour and a half, maybe. No, queen d7, queen a6 from Danny. Queen d7 from Andre. Certainly don't want to fix White's pawn structure. Very, very smart, Dr. Chain. Dr. Chainsaw. Queen e7, queen e4. It is correct, guys. Queen d7. Black is now threatening to play the e5 move. Now, White is actually forced to create weaknesses now if he wants to defend um, this pawn. So he plays uh, f4 right here to stop e5, which creates some weaknesses all around his king. If you look at just king side weakness, nothing else. King side weakness. Look at White. Right. And look at black. We all good over here. So eventually, something could happen. Saturday night turn up. We in here. Magic like Tao, my guy. My guy. E5 from Vishnu Warrior. You're talking about E5 right now? Well, in fact, chat, what do you think? Is it E5 right now? Or are we going to wait on that? What are we doing here? E5 right now? Or are we going to wait on this? What y'all trying to do, chat? Come on. Come on. B6, not E5 now from A doc. Okay. This is probably the hardest part of chess right here, right? I actually have a book now, so I'm reading on that about that. But uh, this is the hardest part of chess. You know you have a slight advantage, right? You know this, you have the ice to light upon. And the problem here is you have to literally not sit around and do nothing, but you have to learn how to do nothing very well. There's nothing really to do and expand right now, but you have to actually try to improve your position and do nothing very well. That's one of the hardest things to do in chess here. Is to make good moves that really kind of do nothing right now, but also is helping you improve the position later on down the line. And in fact, here's the move. B6. He just plays B6. B7 is kind of weak. Tying my queen down to it. So let's defend it. Now my queen has reins to do something. Right? Do something. Then, okay, man plays rook B4 and says, whatever. Shuffle. Want to draw, bro? Want to draw? Stick his hand out. Smack his hand away and say, I don't draw nothing. I don't have no pencils or no pens in my house, my guy. Draw nothing. That's disrespectful. So after B rig B4, it's black to move. What do you do? He don't want no draw. He ain't trying to draw nothing. Queen A4 also seemed interesting. Yeah, that actually probably was. But Rook A3, I think Rook, oh, but then I can't, right? Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's cute. Queen A4 actually probably was, it's a, it was a nifty move, in fact. Queen D6, Knight E5, Rook B5. Okay, Queen A4, smack that is right, magic. Must be right. Rook C8 from Sadie. Since everything is covered. Tactics. Queen E8. No draws. Right, right. Here's what, man, this move right here is nasty. So he played B6, right? Then after Rook B4, Susio got it right here. B5, look alive. Woo, sheesh. B5, big fella. I played it once. Now I'm going to play it twice. Because now A5 is a threat. That's tempo. Remember, tempo equals time. And when you have the time, you can do many more things. Look at that. He played B6. 
Then he said, B5 and we live, big fella. Oh, yeah, hold on, big fella. It's going to be over soon. A5 is a big boy move, followed by B4, which is expanding. Some type of minority attack, but it's not a minority. It's exactly the same. But the, this is going to be nice. I just follow things most soon. Appreciate you, bro. Yesterday, let's 26. Push the pawns. Let's go. Ele elevation. My guy. No one was looking at that. It's so unnatural. Correct. Not a rook is gross. Look at this. Look at this piece. Oh, this is a rook? Oh, my bad. I didn't know what this piece was. This is. I didn't know what it was. B5. So after B5, he plays A4. Kind of forced. Kind of forced here. Because now if A5, I can at least get out where rook takes B5. But now, chat, right? Now, I'm going to be honest. Um, uh, Karpov actually missed the number one move. But he did play the number two move. Now, what's the number one move? What do you think the number one move is, chat? My boy out here running ISO. <laughs> and then looked at him real quick. In fact, when y'all see the thumbnail, right? That's exactly... When y'all see the thumbnail for this video, of course, when you see this on YouTube, right? The thumbnail is what you see first, right? When you see this, uh, what I want you to... Imagine Karpov doing that, right? This is exactly what Karpov is doing right now, right? Hit that man, stop, look at him because you just crossed him. And then he about to pull up on him from the three. Or he about to Jason Terry LeBron up, right? LeBron Jason Terry, right? Google it. You don't know what that is? Google LeBron Jason Terry. It'll tell you everything. It'll tell you everything. A4, after A4, uh, there's a better move. In fact, there's a better move. <laughs> I magic like Tile B. I know he know. Uh, v takes A5, A5, A4, right? Right, Jason Terry. My goodness, all right? Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. May he rest in peace as he's still living. There was the nasty crossover, right? A A6, okay. Well, maybe Rook C8. Correct. Susio is actually Rook C8. Rook C8 is the number one move, which is like minus two. Surprisingly, he didn't play this, but he just took on A4. Like, why not? It's just a free pawn with no regard, right? You got the, the title of 41 title. Yeah. All right. So B takes A4. He just takes it. Queen A3, right? So now I'm attacking A4. I want to take the A4 pawn, says um, Korchinoi here. Now there's there's uh, about 10 moves left here, guys. So it's black to move, right? Now he can't get the pawn back. This isn't over yet. You have to be very, very accurate here and sharp and sharp, right? There may be some slight tactics involved, but this is a lot about precision and understanding and grinding down. And really like, you know, squeezing, squeezing. Remember, they used to call him, right, a boa constrictor, right? Think about a boa constrictor. That's what Karkov is. In this kind of position, this is where he, you know, he's going to show you that boa constrictor. All of that boa constrictor. Uh, how can he take the pawn on d4, right? When is the moment? Uh, now he can take the pawn on d4? No, that's no good. I mean, taking it on d4 right now, queen a3. I mean, rick takes d4 is like, uh, it's gross. In fact, rick takes... This is like, wh what did you do, bro? You know, this is a family channel, right? You know this, right? You know, and hey, we got underage, like people under under 15, like watching this. Can't be doing that, bro. You can't even do that, big fella. When is the moment? E5, A5, A5. I see Queen E7. Queen E7, that's kind of gross. A5 is the move, guys. My bad. <laughs> My bad, bro. My bad, bro. A5, A5, right? He does play A5, and after Rook takes A4, yeah, yes, you found the right move, chat, but what's the follow-up? Sometimes you find the move, but what is the follow-up? I forgot about E5, yeah. A5, giving back the pawn. Interesting, very interesting. Very interesting here. Very interesting. What is the follow-up, chat? E5 from Sadie. Again, Karpov actually missed this move once again, which is kind of crazy. Queen B5 from ele uh, Elevation. In fact, it's actually Rook C8 once again. Strange. Rook C8? Like, what? I guess he's going to the second rank. But Queen B5 is what he chose. I love this move. Because it ties... Look at... Look at... Look at... What are you moving? Wh where are you going? Uh, where are you going? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. You literally... You have two pieces that only have one move. Or, like, two moves. Look at this. That is beautiful. How do you even do this? How do you even do this? Queen a2, queen a1, but what? You can't move the queen because the rook hangs? You can't even move the rook. You can't even move it. This is crazy. So after rook to d2, because he's just trying to hold on to life, right? I'm trying to get the last little breaths out as this boa constrictor squeezing my whole body. I'm trying to hold and like maybe hold my breath a little bit. Maybe he think I'm dead. And then he like, nah, bro, I feel that heart beating. Rook to d2, right? Black to move. What do we do? Back to move. I ain't E2, says Sadie. Let you breathe out, but not in. 
Yeah, I'll let you breathe out, but not in, says Magic Like Tao. Rook C8 from Elevation. Rook C8, surprisingly, this time is the third best move. Like, it was, like, the best move for a while. Now it's the third best move. It is a move, but not the absolute best. The absolute best here is, in fact, uh, Karpov did find it this time. The absolute best. I'm just a burrito. Thanks for the follow. Man, you know what that makes me think about? Food. What time is it? Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Appreciate you, bro. A dot King F8. Uh, Rook B8. Okay. E5. There it is. Jack Kern got it. E5. This is the move. Now it's time to break with E5. Because now his king's all crazy. The pieces are barely moving. And we don't want him to consolidate and get his pieces out. So maybe like Queen A2 or Rook A3 was coming next. So you need to break now and be fast. After F takes, Rook takes. Uh-oh. Wait a second. Hold up. There's some checks back here. There's some mates on the back rank, my guy. You go Rook D1. Well, you're done. Rook E2. And what do you do? Right? It's looking crazy. I'm taking the seventh rank. I mean, maybe I, maybe Rook E2. Maybe not. Because A5 is hanging. But come on, big dog. This is over. So he plays Queen A1. I need to free everything. Also covering the back rank as well. Okay, chat. Black to move. Right? This is getting crazy. Now, remember, the man, the man is definitely a monster, right? Uh, Karpov is boa constrictor, right? Mr. Positional, Mr. You know, I'm best with moving my pieces backwards because he was known for doing that a lot. But here, I mean, the man is still nasty with the tactics. Remember that he was a world champion. You know, on that resume, it says Mr. Tactics being world champion, right? So the black to move, bro. What do you do here? You about to eat a burrito after I follow? You know what? I'm thinking about what kind of burritos I actually have in the fridge bro so i appreciate you bro because you just made me think about the food i got the patient he had was playing is nuts right this guy here what we doing tonight we are covering the iso which is the isolated pawn something you see in many many different different the ideas that you learn today you can apply to any isolated pawn position so make sure you watch this video many times ricky four ricky two looking good ricky two right now remember we looking at tactics here these all are good moves here watch what this man did bro he played a move man oh sheesh Queen E8. Whoa. Oh my good. What is this? Look at the geometry. The man just see everything. Rook E1 and you're done. Rook E2 looking crazy. And then I'm going to bring the queen behind it just for reinforcements. Just for reinforcements. We're just going to bring the homies with us as well. We're about to come through the back way and everybody coming in the house. Queen E8 after D takes E5 because he got to kind of take it, right? Rook E1 is for real. Let's see what happened on Rook D1. Rook D1, Rook E2. In fact, right now, believe it or not, is mate in 16 right now. Mate in 16. Engine says mate in 16. And the only reason is because Rook D3, they say best move, give up your queen. Bro, just, yo, abandon ship, leave your family, okay? You need, you, if you want to try to survive, only for a little bit longer. Right, that's it. You're still going out. But if you want to survive a little bit longer, this is what you're going to do. So Rook to D1 is not a move, right? So it doesn't work. That hat is nice. Thanks, bro. Appreciate you. So, uh, let's get the merch command in the chat. My guy. Big section. Thanks for the follow. Abandon ship. Get the man off of there. Get the wife and kids out of the house. It's on fire. Oh, my goodness. That's so funny. Okay. So after queen e8, right? So after queen e8, he takes on e5. After t takes on e5, rook takes d2. Boom. He takes on d2. And obvious. I mean, because you had to get the rook back. I mean, you literally had to do this. Rook takes d2. And, uh, okay. He takes on a5 because he kind of has to here. But how do you do it? How do you finish this off now, chat? Obvious mate in 16, of course. Obvious. You know, it's the obvious. You know, the juicer, right? No. Yeah, come on, chat. Stop being toxic, chat. My guy, Hikaru. Big shout out to Hikaru. Merch. Uh, queen D8. Yeah, Queen D8. Ooh, Queen D8 is 100% face blockage. Natural. Premium. Cambodian. Get the man off the board. What are you doing with your life? Rick A.A. Now, in fact, I guess you're okay with a Rick D1 check. I guess you're okay. Luckily, you have this move. Because if not, like, you are straight Garbo. Uh, uh, ten times in a row. Ten times in a row, right? Like, maybe take the queen? What is it? Whose move is it? Black to move? Yeah, take the queen. I take, you take. Right. So, strange. Strange. Men, men, raid? Men, raid? Oh, snap. Oh. Oh, sheesh. Big boy men for the win. We got men for the rent for the win. I appreciate you, bro. Thanks, man. Hope you had a great stream, bro. We finishing up. In fact, we're on the last few moves of the isolated pawn we're looking at today. Uh, famous game, World Championship 1981. Karpov and uh, Korchnoi. Korchnoi playing white in this game, round nine, game nine. Good luck for the stream. Thanks, Ben Lee. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks, man. Average Joe, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the stream, y'all. Hope y'all have a good one.
Zeta, what's good? Yeah, Queen B8, like, this is not a move, right? So Queen B8's no good. Queen B8 is even worse, in fact. Queen B8 is, sheesh, man. You, bro, what are you doing? What are you doing, right? You just come to the back rank. Don't even do this, right? So after Rick takes A5, okay, chat, what do we have? I see Queen D7. Sasso says Queen C6. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? I do see, did I miss anything? Queen C6. Queen C6, King H7. I see a King H7 and a Queen D7. We have King H7, Queen D7. I heard a Queen C6 in there. All right, so that's right. In fact, Queen C6 is right. Why not? Just hit mate. Just hit mate and we great. So he hit you with a check, flex real hard. You got to go to H7, right? There's nothing else to do. Queen B1, he hit you with a check, flex real hard. G6, get out the way. Have a nice day. The man go Queen F1 and the man is done. What do you do here? Black Samu, finish it off now. Finish it off now, chat. Who can do it first? Andrew Hawk, thanks for the follow. Karpov hit this man with a move or a sequence. This is a rapster. Get the man off the board. So what is it? Queen G2? Yeah, bulldozer. When you play Queen G2, I want you to just get up quietly. All right, get up quietly. Leave. Never come back to any of these tournaments ever again. Queen G2 is not a move. Queen to C2. C2, Queen takes A8. You can just take the rook. That is a move, I think. Uh, but I think you're getting perpetted out, in fact, which is not even cool. Ouch, that's going to hurt, right? Look at this. Bam, perpetual. What? No, he caught me. He called me. And now you're just getting perpetted out. And if King G8, look at this. Now you lose it. Now you didn't jump off the deep end. Somebody get this, man. Somebody. Oh, my goodness. Send a stretcher to his address. We got it on file. Wow. Space advantage. Thanks for the follow. I mean, that's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. So you can't even take the rook. So, in fact, it is a staircase to pin a queen and rook. Something like that. Space advantage. Fell apart like too sweet, right? This is, uh, watch this. This is, he played queen c5 check. Oh, wait. Cowboy has a line. He says queen c5, then queen d5, then rook d1. I don't know if that's right. I think you're right here. In fact, queen c5 looks beautiful, right? King has to go to the corner, right? And then he goes queen d5. Very easy. And right here, in fact, right, uh, white resigned. This was it. Portion of resigns right here. I mean, Rick D1's over. Rick D1's game over. I'm just going to win the queen. I'm going to take this pawn and I'm just going to march and game over. Right. This is over from here. This was a very, very nice show. In fact, if you think about it, think about this, right? If we, we're going to run through this game again, like very quickly, but if you think about the moves that Karpov made this game, he didn't even do nothing spectacular, bro. He didn't even do nothing like, oh man, did you see that nasty? Right, 17 move tactic or whatever. Bro, he didn't do none of that. He did a very simple way of playing. And he found the weakness. He bullied the weakness. Played great chess. Very light in accuracies. Not many weaknesses in his own position. And was able to crush uh, Korchinoi here based off of that. That's kind of nuts, right? That's insane to look at how simple this was. And you can do the same thing when you see an isolated pawn. Let's go from the beginning, from the top. For people that missed it. C4, E6, Knight, C3, D5. D4, Knight of Six, right? Do we have a chess crew that streams? Um, do you have a chess crew that streams? I don't. It's just me, bro. Uh, who do you follow for fun and knowledge? I follow a little bit of everyone. Chess bra, chess coach, and that. Those are my favorites. Chess bra, chess coach, and that. Chess.com. Then find go, right? I mean, everybody stream chess weeb. Like, you know, I'm not turning with all the boys. He's at list of sequence. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Yeah, nice sequence. That was a nice sequence there. We all learn it. That's right. Knight of Three, Knight of Six, Bishop G5. H6, castles, uh, rook c1, and take on c4. Thanks for the follow, Quantum Kitty. It's a sweet name. C5, bishop takes, he takes d4. He takes, there it is, right? We'd have made an iso pawn. Watch how your man's carp off, go to work like a surgeon or a boa constrictor. That's what they called him, right? Uh, man, I would have blundered my queen if I was in that game. In fact, I would have lost on second move. That's okay. Just keep playing and then, you know, move on, lose on move four and five and then get better. Lynn 200, thanks for the follow. Bishop takes e7, knight takes, and then he brings the knight back to control the d5 square, right? Because you want to bully the iso pawn. Knight e5, he plays bishop d7. Could have played b6 and Finchetto, but he played bishop d7. Totally fine. Queen e2, he plays rook to c8, and we great. Very nice. And this was the blunder by Korshnoi here, because again, when you have the isolated pawn, you want to limit trades. I mean, very, very limited. Even bishop takes e7 was compromising. So you need to not the trade pieces. He trades, and then he gets into a worse position immediately. After more trades, the pawn is now highlighted even more. Queen d6, rook d8, we great. 
Rick B6, we ain't want to get hit with the skewer at all. So Queen D7, Rick D6 is coming out here. He hit him, hitting here, right, hitting here. Okay, Knight D5 in the center. Queen D2, he goes Queen B6, just a little bit of shake and bake. See what he's doing. Takes, takes, and then bring the Queen around. Queen D7, hitting D, uh, D4, B6, getting the Queen off so I can now move the Queen away. B5, beautiful. This was a star move. Highlighting how gross this rook is. And then a5 was going to be coming, so he played a4, snapped those. He like, yo, let me get that back. a5, let me get that back. Queen b5, you can't go nowhere. Find a move. And he's like, I got one, only one. Rook d2. e5, very strong stuff. Uh, and then pawn takes, rook takes, and now the man is in trouble on the double. Queen a1, queen e8, sheesh, boy, everything about to collapse. Takes, 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 uh, give me those. Queen here, hold up. Hitting, hitting, hitting again. Sheesh, get the man off the board. Right, this is over. In fact, I mean, I don't know why that's even there. I don't know who did that. Like, that's, that's like some extra analysis from somewhere. But that ain't us. I mean, you just go rig D1. It's very easy. Very easy. But he resigned, right? And that was a rapster. So, um, but that was today's video, guys. And until the Karpov, uh, of course, you know, playing Karpov. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. See y'all on the next one. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and check out the, uh, the other videos as well. See y'all on the next one.